they open up this realm where if you need to leave, you just get in the vehicle and you go. Mm -hmm. And you can potentially never come back and you have a second home that you can romp around in. This mess, I'll tell you what, man. Hey, Seller Tide. Wow, whatever my name is. This is Tyler with TJX Survival Survival Dispatch. I am at Acme Overland. And today, the thing that I want to show you is options. Um, when it comes to survival, having the ability to move from one affected area to a non-affected area can be the key to living, going on to go somewhere else. And if we're being totally honest, overlanding's just cool. Overlanding's fun. It's something I'm really interested in. So check out these vehicles this company makes. It's a company here local to Salt Lake City. And tell me what you think down below. Tom, Tom Bender, Back Me Overland. Um, thanks for joining us. We'll give you guys a quick tour of what we do here. So we are a, you know, we'll call it a vehicle builder. Um, we started with Sprinter Vans um, for transits and have moved not into exclusively, but into a kind of a bigger realm. Um, so we work on a lot of um, Mercedes-Benz trucks um, from Unimogs to kind of their big brother, big sister um, vehicles. Uh, build them custom for our clients. And you'll have to excuse my nose. I've got a little bit of a cold here, so pardon, pardon that. But we'll walk through and just kind of give you a, a quick peek at what we're kind of getting into. Uh, so everything in the shop would be a client's vehicle that we've uh, worked with to build the floor plan um, from the vehicle, ha having the vehicle to five, building the box to things like the, the hatches, uh, and then everything within from showers, radiant heated flooring, um, the electrical systems. Uh, actually, I'll pop this hatch book behind us here, kind of showcase the, you know, what is the garage space in this thing. Um, and then there's a barbecue down here. So just all kinds of little bits and pieces through these trucks specifically, which also kind of ties right into the, the, the van market as well. So, and, and everything, actually everything in the shop is in various states of completion. This thing's probably like 85% complete. Um, we have vans that are 10% complete and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, so just kind of, you know, continue to walk through here and um, if you want to ask questions as we yeah, go. So what's your, what do you put your base vehicles on? Does that just depend on what people ask for? Yeah, it really is client based. Uh, we do tend to lean towards a Mercedes platform. We have a lot of contact in Europe, a lot of resource in Europe that we'll work with to kind of um, find. This was an ex fire truck. Uh, the Unim Unimog was ex NATO, uh, was an ambulance. There was an ex fire truck over that way. Well, it's not that we're exclusive on Mercedes Benz. We do work a lot of Mercedes Benz on their chassis, but having those resources overseas to bring these trucks in, which we think are very, very good for kind of these, you know, expedition type vehicles. They're 25 years old. They're all mechanical, relatively easy to service. Uh, if they do break down, they're all wheel drive, lockers, um, uh, or what a powerful kind of a g generic term, but they're, they're powerful vehicles can contain a lot of, and, and contain a lot of weight um so yeah that's kind of the base vehicle we typically choose but we do uh we have stuff in the works it's on a ford f550 that's brand new so kind of just varies what the client what the customer wants so it's awesome you want to show me in front of this one yeah yeah come on swing around this way and uh um on this truck we've added uh there's a snorkel there's an updated led lighting um uh, we've got a whole bunch of forget the excuse that the lack of space for hacks, but winch that we've added. This is this. So this truck is a Mercedes Benz. It's a 94. Uh, it's an SK 1634. What that basically means is it's a 16 
thousand or 16 tons sorry and then roughly 340 horsepower generally is what it equates to this truck has actually been tuned so it has something like uh 500 horsepower substantial yeah this is just sorry substantial upgrade um it's a six cylinder uh turbocharged intercooled uh it's automatic transmission um and then so that's the kind of the chassis that we started with inside the cab we've refurbed everything um i can see if there's a leather wrapped steering wheel we've added uh cameras for visibility um kind of around the vehicle full upholstery inside added sound um all kinds of stuff within uh the lighting the roof rack we didn't do on this particular truck this was done um the client had, had done that before us um but something like unimog which is just behind us we've done cab roof rack brush guards rear roof rack all of those things uh, a little more of a complete package and aesthetically kind of is more of a, a final finished product and, and this this uh, so as we're as we're looking you know, at this uh unimog here we did uh we didn't paint this particular truck um, it was refurbed uh at a, at a facility outside of out of utah here um, but we've done all the upholstery in the cab, um, added camera the, for visibility, added lighting, exterior. Um, so we've done a lot of work in the cab uh, on this truck as well. That, that is kind of a common theme, whereas we'll take a vehicle. Th these, these vehicles weren't necessarily made for, you know, comfort, comfort travel. Um, so we're, we're trying to make them a, a lot more comfortable in, in their state for, for, our, for our clients. So um, this is a 1300L Unimog. That's the, the chassis. Um, was like I said, ex uh, ex NATO ambulance. So it was was a European vehicle at one point. I don't know the the exact back history on it, but um, was brought to us about a year ago now. Um, just a chassis. So we've taken, you know, what is you still see, you know, some of the the raw parts of the Mercedes Benz, um, kind of the base vehicle, but things like you know we've added this S Pod for lighting control. We've added a backup camera or a reverse camera. It has this dual function, so it has a higher and lower camera as well. Um, upholstered, you know, kind of the interior spots that, that needed it, which can, which also helps control sound. Added this little um, uh, kind of storage, but also dog bed. So underneath there's, there's storage, kind of hard to see right there. Um, but this will also be a dog bed for their small dog. Um, we didn't do any like upgraded stereo specifically in this, but they have this Bluetooth JBL that they'll also pull to the rear of the vehicle so they can have that. Then they can also take it outside too. So we've got a little mount that we made for it. Um, there was AC added to this, um, Schumann seats, and then really the probably the biggest portion of this whole thing is we pulled the whole back wall out and then um, added the pass-through into the, the habitat, the living space. So that was probably the, the biggest portion of this whole job, um, aside from kind of the, the, the living space itself. So, um, you know, kind of in its in its um, basic form, the, the Unimog is, uh, was intended as a tractor. It's pretty raw. But I think what we've what we've added here kind of just makes it a little more of a, a you know a little more creature comforts comfortable thing to drive around for for this couple and and, and then their dog of course. See, get the stuff. A lot of space. I like that because you can work on these things. Yeah, that is the beauty of some of these older trucks. They were very much they're very very easy to work on. Kind of the beauty of uh, an older truck or older mechanical vehicle for expedition travel is that they. You know, inevitably something will happen. Something might break down over time, and they can be very easily serviced, which is again the beauty of these things. So on on this particular truck here, we we didn't add the winch. This was done prior to our work um, by the company who did the refurb work, but we did add new uh, headlamps here, um, and then of course the roof rack, Baja light up top, um, and then you know we'll get to the module part of things here in just a moment. But um, you know the roof rack itself. It's, uh, it does have a hoist up there that we could put a spare tire. They, they more than likely will use it just for storage rather than an additional spare tire. Um, whereas a spare tire racks on the back. So and we can we can circle around there as well. Tinted the windows. Um, we kind of tend to do that on most most of the vehicles. Added side ladders in the cab. Um, and we have foxes. Foxes are very much in progress. Uh, there are a couple over here, but probably tough to jump into this right now. But uh, we can... Hopefully, I just get a quick yeah ladder. Don't mind if what Jake's working there, slaving away. You want me to pop out? Yeah. He'd be like, huh, I need dad jokes." <laughs> I'm getting dad jokes. Uh, no, no, I don't think my jokes are appropriate. Uh, that's fair. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. But so we we built uh, we built this from the ground up. This was on the ground, you know, a month ago. The box itself, when we lifted it up on there, just a little easier to work on the ground with one of these versus up and down a ladder all the time. So. I'm sure Jake's 
had enough of going up and down a ladder at this point. But. I just stole his ladder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a stair set that will go up. We just, this van is too tight right now to, to make that happen. So, um, and then, like I said, around the whole vehicle, um, there are Mercedes Benz fuel tanks on it. Those weren't, those weren't changed at all. There's two of them. So I think they've upgraded one to add another. Um, Air, air system had been gone through prior to us, and then we have kind of AC work on the outside here. There's storage boxes, two on each side, um, um, and then the the large kind of storage rack on the rear, which um, I guess we didn't even talk about. You could almost put a whole sleeping berth in there. That has a lot of space. There is It is a good-sized garage. We made So we made the hatches and everything for this particular box specific to fit bikes on a slider tray that will slide out kind of full distance so like so e-bikes and whatever or mountain bikes mountain bikes specifically yep yeah. yep yeah. so they'll have two mountain bikes actually i think they'll travel with three this is going to be where their skis will live um all all of that metal work is down below it's kind of one of the, the later things or last things we'll put in so we can still continue to work and not have that all be in our way so uh that's just awesome yeah uh, thank you and then and then like i said the rear rack here it remains a little more modular um simple at this point until they move quote unquote move into it and start um, using it knowing what they're going to put on the back whether that be a box um, I know they will put a, a propane um, cylinder of some sort on there and we have a ladder on the other side just uh, if, you know in case they need to get up to the top for any, any particular reason so so this is something someone could easily live out of permanently long term or even just get in and go to another country with these yes to both of those um these folks will actually, they've, they've sold their home and will move into this here in the next, um, call it four weeks. Um, so they're going to travel for a year specifically in this, in this truck. Um, I know they will go to Alaska. We, I, they were here, um, three weeks ago now. Um, and I asked that very question, like, what are you guys going to do? Like, what's the plan? Cause I'm, I kind of live vicariously through most of my clients and, um, yeah, so they, they will, they will start here. They're going to go uh, as it's still a little cooler here in, in Salt Lake, they're going to go south, Arizona and stuff. Then they're going to go all the way to Alaska. And then on their way back, they'll head to, to Mexico, Baja, and, and perhaps finish their trip at that point or continue further south. So uh, that's, they're kind of, um, it is a, they want to get to Alaska. That's like the goal. And then everything after that's like whatever. Just the icing on the cake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Electrical system, you know, in its, in its, um, I don't know. And its simplicity is is some batteries and inverter, solar control, or those sorts of things. Um, it is way more complex than that. But for what what I think my clients need to interface with and how I want them to use that and not have complications with, it is actually quite simple. So we have a, a touchscreen uh, interface that's it's up. We can't see it. I'm pointing through this wall. Um, but that controls basically all of the lights, controls water tanks, uh, water tank levels, um, heater controls ac in in certain cases so it will do pretty much everything for you uh that also has an app that you can just you know touch turn turn lights on and off those sorts of things um and then victron itself has its own kind of back end where you can go in and, and view those things from afar if you needed to so if this truck was stored for a while and you needed to check on your status of things if it's not turned off you can go on to that portal and look at these things which is kind of the beauty of victron stuff uh, plus it's common throughout most places marinas those those sorts of uh, industries. So common, common product, but 12 volt system. Um, it's a 3000 watt inverter uh, has, gosh, I forget how much solar is on the roof, but the roof is basically covered save for where there's space for their Starlink um, that they will put. Um, and then the roof hatch. So it's a, it's a pretty full solar array. And the truck itself will also charge via alternator. Um, and then there's a short plug as well. So it is kind of three things. Mostly they'll get most of their charge from solar. So um, and then there's three 330 amp uh, lithium batteries. So nice, uh, robust electrical system for what is a pretty simple vehicle itself for what they're using. Induction is their biggest draw. So well, these these are lithium centers. They're lithium. Yep, exactly. Yep. So so again, kind of uh, you know, in its in its simplicity, uh, it is it is an inverter, some batteries, a solar controller, uh, and then a whole bunch of wiring. <laughs> so basically, a whole off grid system all fully contained capable of just traveling absolutely yeah absolutely for for, a, for for what they have for what they're using like what they're consuming with power it is a, it's it's a very robust system for that i mean they could plug in if they were they don't have room for it but like a microwave you could easily travel with that without any problem um an additional in, induction if they wanted to without any problem it's a it's a 
it's, it's kind of one of those systems it's overbuilt um in case you know down the road they want to do something else with it that we haven't predicted so yeah. really awesome cool this truck came from europe um was like i said originally was a fire truck and it's um when it started its life kind of beauty of uh beauty with a fire truck is that it's same same with the u.s same anywhere across the world it's incredibly maintained low miles um and then in europe these things are four-wheel drive um and they can kind of just do anything put three old tires on there these are 395 295s 85s r20s yeah it's a big old tire same thing uh, lmtv's got yep yep exactly i've seen um we've seen them with 14 double i've seen them with 16 like they they can go bigger too sometimes it just comes down to what makes the most sense um, so it's basically it's like 47 inch tire right yeah yeah they're, exactly they try and it into a, a couple of like 53 inch tires in the back and those are just they're ridiculously large but um yeah so we've done and, and still there's a couple little bits you'll see the the fuse panel exposed here um but we basically gutted this thing uh and reupholstered most of everything new headliner upgraded audio and we can we can jump up in there so similar kind of to the unimog um directly across from us there we we've upgraded um refurbished kind of the, the interior of the cab here as well from um new air ride seats to a whole bunch of new paneling um, new roof paneling for sound control we've added this kind of drop down for the ac for the audio that's coming through for additional lighting overhead and then we've added additional kind of camera monitoring systems while for while driving specifically just for better because there are a number of different blind spots in this thing so um just to kind of get better visibility in general reverse, reverse cameras of course a huge one uh and then we've got infrared here which is great for you know kind of nighttime uh, driving as well um so you know touch screen with with navigation uh light control with the s-pod again we've added you know multiple usbs around um trying to think of what else is going on in this thing the sound in this truck is unlike anything I've ever honestly experienced. It's pretty wild. The the, the engine itself is also quite wild, um, but the the kind of the sound work we've done in here to quiet down the engine, honestly, and then added uh, upgraded speakers and audio and all that stuff. So, and then uh, this this particular couple um, they actually have two large dogs. So like while this is their driving space, um, their dogs have kind of this back space to lounge in, which again is kind of wild that they. The dogs have a, a full nice big bad back there kind of fun awesome. um you can you can easily adjust that and put that like three adult seats back there come easily yeah, yeah easily Maybe. the other truck over here we can we can look at that cab as well we've added uh two more air ride seats but you could seat a whole bunch more people in there that that truck over there was meant for seven people in total um from it's like when it was born uh, at the mercedes factory so uh, but then, yeah, so this is the rear will be, there's additional storage back here. Um, and then, like I said, that will be mostly cushions and stuff for their dogs to, to live while driving and actually sleep at night as well. Of course, there's a, the pass through that pass through goes into the bathroom and we'll look, we'll look in there in just a moment. But otherwise the, the cab itself, um, one thing I didn't quite on, I'm sitting on is that we had the st uh, steering wheel other wrapped. Um, we talked about doing like full leather wrap on the whole dash and everything, but then decided that it could. It wasn't, it didn't, financially didn't make sense to do that. So we just did their steering wheel. So, um, it, 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 it's quite wild what it does though, from, um, you know, most of these vehicles are commercial. So it's like, that's not very their raw. Words. Yeah. Very, very raw. And you know, Mercedes Benz does a nice job of like making it less raw. It's still a nice vehicle from the get go, but, um, this just adds that level of detail to it. So, um, uh, windows are tinted all around. That's a big deal for just the amount of windows in the space. So the, this truck has been, um, it's been in development for almost two and a half years from when I met the client, we decided to work together, um, you know, floor plan, truck, all of those things. So there's a, there's a timeline, uh, a long line, uh, a long timeline in these things. So it's nice to kind of see like, you like building the house. It, it is absolutely a hundred percent. This, this particular truck, the, the Unimog is, is similar, similar, right? But, um, this, it has fully radiant heated floors. There's three sections of that uh, floor um the huge garage that we kind of already looked at power system which is um arguably the most complex we've ever worked on um from the you know custom shower and a bathroom stall area um and then everything else it's just it's it is a it is absolutely a home and then of course the finishes um you know the, the this particular client's pretty meticulous about the finishes and, and we are as well so you know that it, it works well for us i guess but all of the the kind of darker wood you see is teak uh, and then you know otherwise it's a white laminate 
This is the kitchen area. It has a you know a huge sink, and I'm we have to envision this right now because it's it's very much in process still. But all of the water controls will be here, um, and there'll be access from outside as well. So you kind of have the ability to plug in. That will be closed off from the inside. Um, could you pull off of like raw river water? You could. So in, in that scenario, I would say uh, it, we we've talked about this at length, him and I. If he was going to do that, if that was something he, sorry, my, my voice is going up and down with the noise out there. If he was to do that, any of my clients could, I would suggest having a pre-filter before going into the main filters, just as a, just so it doesn't clog up the main filters faster, right? So we do with all of our systems, they'll have a pull function, a pump that's pulling water in. Uh, and then also from city water, you could also yeah. push the water through and, and it all does get filtered, UV filtered before it does go into the tank. Do you want to so, show me both of them? Yeah, I do. Um, so it, while, while we're kind of moving that way, this is our touchscreen I was mentioning before. That's the Victron um, system? Uh, Victron is all of the components. This is our touchscreen that we developed to, you know, turn our lights on and off uh, in control. Uh, it's not quite set up yet, so it's missing some things. But tank for, uh, levels, um, you know, heaters, those sorts of things. Chass voltage chassis unplugged right now. So, uh, but that gives us where I was going is I need to turn on the bathroom lights. So. Uh, and then we can help it here and I will stand back just because I'll let you go in. Uh, talk bit, talk loud. Not enough room. Yeah, there's not enough room for us to bulk kit in there. So. But the bathroom itself has, you know, shower, has uh, also forced air. There's also radiant heat, um, hopped in water, of course. Composting toilet. Yep. Overhead, there's a, an actual shower curtain that will go up and then just more storage. Um, to the right there, that, that rack is a towel warmer. Can I stand here? Yeah, yeah, please. So, while it's a small and compact bathroom, it's a... It's, it's big though, like it. I mean, there's New York apartments that don't have bathrooms. Just certainly, <laughs> yeah. And actually, I'll close this door because it has really lovely lighting with the glass door in it. I'm um, just seeing yeah, them. It's all. You can see a stranger who's sneaking up on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, then the floor in the bathroom, like, there's cardboard on it, so it's not going to give you the visual, but it's a it's a teak wood. It's still, I'm, I'm obviously not standing on the cardboard because I'm a bad person, but no, it's beautiful wood. Yeah, thanks. It's really, I mean, it's been fun to work with it's, these, I mean, really lovely materials. Yeah, so this is just a test on like utensil drawer. Um, so it will be, you know, kind of divided out all of them. And one of my guys is, is drawing those up right now. As I speak, we were just talking through uh, cups and plates and everything. The um, coffee maker, there's some more storage behind. There's a Sonos Bluetooth speaker behind it um, just to kind of contain that for when they're not moving. So we're just trying to make use of all these little nooks and crannies and, and that side's got you know kind of a hanging storage with the uh, starlink behind starlink is awesome i used it up in the top of the windows here a little while ago streaming videos and going nowhere it's it's just the most bizarre and cool thing you could ever imagine and that's be that's become i mean for almost every single one of our builds i would say from the beginning of 23 now onward we've used starlink for all that stuff uh, and that could be, like this one's mounted up here, hard mounted, he's not taking it down. The Unimog is something that they'll move around if they need to. Um, but vans, like, we'll, we'll put it on everything. It's pretty wild, so. It's awesome. Yeah. And then this, um, kind of where the electrical area is, this is actually a raised platform, so it's not those, they look tall right now, but that isn't quite finished. But this will also turn into a lounge, so cushions will go down. It's not a sleeping area, but it is in fact just a lounge. Table will, um, slide push down into a um, on, with an additional push like it's all compact it's very compact yeah and and uh, you know one of the, the most interesting things i think i've found with these big trucks you know we start with this literally big blank canvas it's a huge space from the get-go and then we start to fill it up and it's like okay we're running out of room here quickly uh but there's still a lot of room so we, we have to be very very particular on you know where all these things are going how they're living how they're breathing um and this this area again very much a mess right now it will be very cleaned up we're charging some batteries still it's not we're, bad for a construction zone <laughs> yeah I mean, they... it's very much a construction zone actually another cool thing with this bed is that it does um it kind of they can sleep across if they want but these will also articulate out hold out yeah we don't have a cover top here so there's a little bit of a wiggle 
a bed, you know, cushions, so they can sleep, they can lounge, do all this stuff, um, but also have, they can sleep front to back if they needed to. Um, so, and then actually, maybe I shouldn't say, maybe I should, but there's a whole bunch of hidden storage in the back. There's a, a safe in here, uh, kind of all of that stuff hidden. You know, this safe stays trapped to get clapped, just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, there's just, a, again, trying to make use of every little kind of nook and cranny. On the rear wall, there will be some storage, some like magazine style racks um, on both back back corners there. Um, I really like how well thought out it is, like how planned in advance, you know? Yeah, thanks. It's, it's, uh, it's I mean, I love, I just love that stuff. I, I think my, my clients appreciate it as well, um, which makes it even more fun because we both just kind of get um, excited over the, the little details there's just stuff everywhere so okay. but yeah we didn't even look at the cabinets uh, look at this cabinet man yeah, just huge kind of open space for a whole bunch of stuff and these are effectively finished which is nice to have that checked off the list so but yeah this like i said this thing is probably 85 percent complete lots of Lots of little details left, and the little details are what take, honestly, the longest sometimes. So, um, but really a fun, fun project. People, you know, you might ask, uh, what what can be run off of this uh, electrical system here? Um, so similar to the Unimog, where it has a, um, a a few means of charge from solar to shore input. And actually, interesting on this is that it it's it's intended to travel in the U.S., but also will go back to Europe. So we've had to be um, conscious of what is the charge in Europe, how will a shore be put in. So we have dual, um, you know, Europe is using two 240 versus R120. Um, so we have dual shore inlets and, and a means to be able to charge. I got off, I got off subject there, but, um, you know, with this particular system, uh, and we're missing a couple batteries here right now, but we have a system that does 120 uh, and a system that also does 240. So we're, we're, it is an incredibly robust system. The oven that is just off to the, the right, uh, yeah, this uh, Miele uh, oven, um, it's a, it's a it's a power hungry unit that thing will run upwards of six six hours on the system um we have induction cooked up here and that's a uh, compared to the oven is a kind of a small draw but you can go and then our ac the ac is actually 120 and that's the cool thing with this ac is it's also a heat pump so it does dual things and i think with a lot of a lot of our builds we're trying to have redundancy so we have heated floors we have forced heat air um, we have AC and we also have a heat pump from that, that heater, uh, or from the, they, their conditioning unit. So a lot of redundancies, um, but, but can run, this system can run all of that stuff, um, in a nutshell on what you see here, kind of in this, this bench seat. So while I'm not giving you any specifics, it has, uh, the ability to do all of these things, um, from this Victron system, uh, which is again, kind of the, the goal with this whole thing is to be able to be pretty self-sufficient for a good period of time. So computers phones satellite communication easily cooking, yep lighting everything all of that stuff yeah nope the sorry there's uh someone being the the lighting those uh the computers those are pretty low um consuming items so like those can go i mean i'll say forever there's caveats there as to what that means but um you know those things are very low consumers so they're compared to an oven compared to this induction cooktop like you could go forever with those with those items just running, uh, which is which is again pretty pretty fun. So, but, um, yeah, I guess it, kind of speaking to like longevity of time in this vehicle. So he has a a refrigerator and freezer right behind, and then there's an additional freezer here, uh, and then in the cab you see there was an additional cooler. Uh, so he has a lot of space for for um, cold goods, uh, and then there's also of course a lot of space for dry goods around for storage and whatnot, stuff in the garage and everything else. So the, uh, this, this kind of, uh, kind of, you know, lovingly call this kind of the boneyard. Um, it's a big old muddy, dirty parking lot, but, um, the trucks that we have out here, this is one of our first kind of like expedition truck builds. I found the truck out of Canada. Um, the, the owner had imported the truck, had uh, built the box and really had done some work on the inside, but we ended up just gutting that. But so, so these trucks aren't the, the most beautiful let's say it hasn't been repainted this one particularly the one next to us has and the other one across has but this one is still a little more you know this was what it looked like originally as it's it, as it was a dump truck so um you know it showcases what we do specifically on the inside 
but the outside is, uh, it, you know, could be repainted, all of those things, but it, it, it isn't right now. So still a really fun truck though. It's actually one of the, I mean, funny enough, this, this old dump truck here, uh, one of the nicer trucks that we've ever worked on. Very little wiring issues from uh, previous manufacturers or anything like that. And just simple, all the Mercedes uh, upholstery, trim, everything intact, clean. So I got lucky with this truck kind of buying it side on seat. But we can we can certainly look at this stuff here. And yeah, go. top end. I'm not. So this truck here um, was a truck I bought out of, out of a uh, bought from a guy out of Canada, kind of uh, as our first foray into what is an expedition truck. Let's say this big, you know, kind of large lumbering vehicle. Um, and so this is basically an LMTV that's the other is this the German version of it? Uh kind of the, the Steyr is more that's an Austrian truck is kind of that thing. It's actually very, very similar to what is the that's an Acela there was a Stuart Stevenson. Um but this is you know this is a commercial this is just a, a, a basic stock commercial it was a dump truck. Um so this is what it would come from um you know from a Mercedes factory. This um so I bought this truck out of a guy in Canada. He had built the box in the back, and this was kind of our first, like I said, foray into like what is that expedition truck. Um, but this truck particularly, like the interior is intact. There are very few holes in the dash, let's say. Um, it's, it's a very simple, basic vehicle. It was very, very well cared for as a, uh, as a dump truck, which again, kind of wild. Um, but we did clean it up. We added air ride seats. We've added air conditioning. Um, we've added forward lights and those sorts of things, but really kind of um, kept it pretty simple as the budget was simple for this one. So um, this this right now has a little dog bed in it. Uh, I think we're going to put a, a third seat in here is kind of the plan. And um, and then, yeah, the, the original configuration, ideally you'd have a pass through into the, the habitat, the living space. The previous owners had done this tire uh, here, similar to Stuart Stevenson from military, like, um, so we've just kind of left that. We revised the the, um, the spare tire a little bit, but left it otherwise as it was a little complicated. So, um, but yeah, we can go look in the in the habitat as well. Actually, I'll pull these pull these steps. That's kind of a cool idea. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've seen I've seen all kinds of things from motorized steps to articulating steps, and and the the theory behind all of them is usually pretty good. But there's something so just like that simple about this um, that I'm not love gonna it. break. It's like it's yeah, it's just, nothing to get sand in it. It always works. It's always here. So I'm gonna jump up here and then get this door. There's also a stair set, but that'll be a pain to get out right then. Um, then we can jump in. Yeah. Nice. Get old. Did that one hand it. Like I said, this was kind of our first foray into uh, what is the, you know, box style build. And um, so while it's all custom, it was kind of custom for no one, which is always very, very difficult to build for uh, and difficult to anticipate what that next person would want to have. But, you know, kind of being thoughtful with that is we have a lot of storage, which is key, air conditioning unit, overhead vents, um, skylights on the bed area or the sorry the, the seating area does convert to a bed a smaller bed um you know microwave um refrigerator induction cooktop uh I, yeah i can see these so we've done we've done bluetooth audio i mean it's not uncommon stuff that we have hot cold water of course um and then full um floor to ceiling shower the, the cool thing i think about the shower is that it does have a um you basically are standing on the gray the gray tank uh so that the shower drains directly into the gray tank and then from from our touch screen you can drain that from the from the control of your phone or from the the back behind us here on the touch screen so and then of course the garage behind or underneath just more storage for for gear for stuff um queen size bed and then just more storage in the back so it's um i mean i think i'm certainly biased but i think it's a thoughtful floor plan i can i can swing this way and you can get more yeah, and then again, kind of like, you know, typical things where you'll have um, some hanging cl closet space where you you might need a jacket. I think a lot of the travelers, a lot of our clients that are using these vehicles, they're in them for, whereas our van clients are in them for a little more shorter term, um, these, you know, the expedition vehicles meant for longer term travel, right? So you're going to have 
uh, perhaps different seasons you're traveling through. So it's nice to have, you know, play sport jackets for those things that are going to be um, needed. Maybe not when you go in the summer, but then as you get into fall, you'll you'll want to have so kind of storage space for all that stuff. And then below is just more more storage space. Just keys are in, in the little, little cubbies and stuff. Kind of dividing that out a little bit better. So. And then similar to you know other trucks, we're utilizing space. Uh, and this one's finished, so you can get to see the detail here, perhaps of. You know, the, the system, the part of the system that you'll really interface with the breakers. Um, again, it's it's trying to keep it as simple as possible. It's very rare you'll need to do much of anything with the system, except perhaps flip a breaker every once in a while, um, you know, to, to check on certain things. So that's, that's how you'll interface with it with our systems. So, and then otherwise, lots of storage. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's kind of awesome. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> reminds me of the inside of a ship. It, it, you know, it's funny. We do, we pull a lot from the marine industry. There's a lot of similar components. Um, a lot of fun product in that, in that world as well. That is really great to, I mean, for, for instance, the, the table post on this comes from the marine world. It, it's something that's very common on a ship where you're, or a boat where you're using, you have to use the space very very thoughtfully um because you only have so much of it right so there's a there's a give and take there the one thing i wanted to share with people is just the modularity and how you can take everything with you so a concept that i've had and i've talked about a lot of times on different channels is in actual events wars earthquakes a lot of stuff that's geographical yeah. and if you have the ability to just walk outside and get in just the simplest of a camper or a pop-up or something mm -hmm. see earthquake shake buildings down they just bounce campers it's true right earthquake wars they suck but if you can get out of the area you're you're less affected so when you've got something that can forward seven feet of water travel a thousand miles on a tank it recharges itself for its own electricity. Mm -hmm. You've got a little bit of cash that you can, once you've gone your thousand miles, hit reset on that tank and do another thousand miles. Mm -hmm. I can go from Salt Lake City to New York in two tanks with your other vehicle that you have right there. And stuff like that is kind of awesome to me. <laughs> so having the ability, and they're, they're a little spendy. They're like a second house, or even nowadays, sadly, they're like a half second house. Certainly. However, they open up this realm where if you need to leave, you just get in the vehicle and you go. Mm -hmm. And you can potentially never come back and you have a second home that you can run around in. Maybe that's not ideal, but it's an option. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of what I wanted to convey to people. That's kind of why I was attracted to looking at these is because it gives you so much mobile ability. It gives you the ability to go up into a mountain and park and you live here now, right? Mm -hmm. And the reality is a lot of that survival stuff hopefully never happens certainly but if it does you have this and if it doesn't it's really cool taking something like this to you know new york if you have to or the grand canyon right here or the tetons right there or yosemite right over here like or even down to baja mexico it's uh that's very common it's a very common trip for sure yeah i mean i i, I the uh ability with one of these it is it is a second home no question i mean that Maybe it doesn't take as long, perhaps, to build as a loan, but actually, yes, sometimes it does. I don't even assume this is more complicated. Now, I'm kind of biased because I've built a lot of homes. Certainly. And I'm still really learning. It's, you know, it's it's more complicated than a home in a sense. A home, like you said, is is, uh, is a home is somewhat stationary, right? Earthquakes can affect those things. And actually, when they do, you see things fall apart, essentially. Um, whereas this vehicle goes through heat, goes through cold. Um, Should I ask quick? Synthetic and it's going to handle water and exactly. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's built more like those oak and less like a wood structure. Exactly. Yeah, it has to. It has to remain. Um, you know, it has to kind of. It has to kind of breathe a little bit um, because it is going down the road. It is vibrating ever so slightly. Um, but again, you know, a vehicle goes through a lot of heat, goes through a lot of cold. Um, when it's not being used, perhaps it's more moderate when, you know, we don't have the heater on. Right you now. could drive this up and park it in a place and now you've got a Ford operating base in that location. I do. It's, it's, really, 
a house that just moves and everything is attached to it. Yep. And it is, it is just as, I mean, it's more compact than most homes, let's say, but it is a home. You have all of those, you have all of those amenities, right? So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, thanks for letting me check these out today. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. If you guys got comments, questions, concerns, leave them down in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Thank you. I'm going to try one of these. Yeah. <laughs>